In the latest release, tile cards have been improved even more. Let's have a look how tile cards can actually enhance your dashboard. And we have some examples of different entity types that can actually be used in the tile card. In a previous video, I mean a complete dashboard using Dwayne's dashboard cards. These tile cards actually look quite similar to those cards. I've picked four different type of entities, so let me show you. The nest entity is a thermostat and you can see the preview over here. So I'm gonna zoom out and I'll show you how you can get this set up. So in the entity list, you just pick your entity, climate entity or any type of entity you want to use. You can see that here you can actually overwrite the name as you can normally by default on any Home Assistant card. I like the fact that you can also change, change the color. You can actually enable show entity picture. You can have vertical if you want it displayed in a different way. The actions are also standard Home Assistant actions to recap the tap action. You can do many things. Most likely you will do either a default action, which is a default action of the entity that you've selected or more info would not is normally reserved to a um, hold tap action and that normally will display the history. This is your tab that's going to be slightly different than before. So if I remove them, the entity actually by default would be like this, very neat. And then I can add feature and you can see that these features are actually specific to the features of the entity that you've picked. We've got climate like heating or off and we've got target temperatures. You can put that up and you can put that down. Let's have a look at a light example. So if you pick a light entity, you can see the features. We have light brightness and color temperature at the moment of recording. And you can probably, if you remove one, you can see, and you have this nice sliding feature over here, which really works really well with mobile, I found. You can also have it vertical positioning, but I actually don't mind this. You can also use it with a cover and we have different features. So the main cover features open and close. And it's the only one that I can pick at a time of recording. You can do the same things with appearance and actions. And it, it's actually very neat because you've got the name of the entity, the current status, the up, the stop and the down. And actually these are grayed out based on the current status of the door. You can actually also use it with something like temperature, for example. So this actually doesn't have any additional feature compatible. So when you encounter this, you'll have no features available. So really, there's really no advantage of using the tile configuration this way. But I like how it's flexible for each type of domain or each entity that you have, you have different features. If you would like me to make a dedicated tile dashboard video in the future to replace my existing Dwayne's dashboard, let me know in the comment section down below. There's a couple of more things that I actually really liked about this release. So now when you're adding a group, so if we go to create a helper and we go and click group, we have this very beautiful UI. If you've never seen this before and you're used to doing groups in YAML only, now you can actually do them in the UI. But also you can also preview the status and this is a recent feature. So you can have different lights for example, and then you would give it a name. So group one or whatever name you want to give it. And then you can see the status would be on underneath here and you can actually hide the members. So you would hide these members so you can't access them, but they will be available in Home Assistant and they'll pile the group. And the way this works with groups is that if one of them is on, then the whole group is on. So for them to be off, all of them need to be off. Really good use case is for motion sensors. So if you want to have a group that represents all motion sensors or occupancy sensors of your home, then that's excellent because if you're outside, you should expect them all to be cleared or off. And then you can trigger different automations via this group. So once the group has been created, you can see the entity name is group underscore one, whatever name we've put in. If you space it out, it'll put an underscore underneath between the names. And if you decide you want to delete a group, just click on the group, go to the cog wheel, scroll down and you'll see the delete. And it will ask you, are you sure you want to delete? Say, okay. And now that group has disappeared from Home Assistant. Now I tend to find that templating is one of the best things in Home Assistant. Slowly, slowly bringing templating to the UI. So making it more accessible to everyday folks. Now, when you actually create a template sensor like this one here in the documentation with this bit of code, you can actually see underneath a preview of what the actual outcome would be, which would be a temperature. And then you can see the degrees and you can actually see listening for the state of the entities. And it obviously will update when those change. So if the outside temperature changes, 
then this calculation will also change, which I believe is just a, an average of two temperatures. You could do this clearly in the developer tools under template, but it's interesting to see it come into the UI and I'm pretty sure it's a step in the right direction of bringing templating to the wider audience. What are your top three favorite features of this Home Assistant release? Let me know in the comment section down below. As I mentioned earlier, I've got my masterclass in templating. You can actually watch it free here on YouTube if you click this button over here or here or somewhere. I'll see you in that video, ciao.